The next step are the other classes within the model package. The rest is relatively trivial after the server class. This is the callback interface we used within the server class. It's pretty trivial. I added some methods for future enhancement too. The first two methods inform the observer that the server is connected or disconnected. Message received is invoked to update the UI based on the new incoming message. The last two callbacks aren't really implemented, but they allow us to update the UI if a user is typing in a chat. The message viewed event similarly indicates if a user viewed the message. This can provide an indicator in the UI that the message was seen. Chat contact is a property business object that stores the content of a specific contact entry. I chose to use unique IDs instead of using the phone as an ID. This was something I was conflicted about. I eventually chose to use an ID which I think is more secure overall. It would also support the option of changing a phone number in, a future, in the future or using an email as the unique identifier. Local ID should map to the ID in the contacts. This allows us to refresh the contact details from the device address book in the future. The phone property is pretty obvious. The photo property stores the picture of the contact. There is a lot to this property, so I'll discuss it in more details soon. These are the common attributes for name and tagline used in WhatsApp. For simplic simplicity, I chose to use a uh, full name and ignored nuances such as first, last, middle, uh, initial, etc. The token is effectively our password to use the service. Since there is no login process, a token is generated on the server as a key that allows us to use the service. A chat contact can also serve as a group. I didn't fully implement this logic, but it's wired almost everywhere. In this case, we have two sets for members of the group and the admin of the group. These sets would be empty for a typical user. The, this property allows us to mute a chat contact, so we won't see notifications from that contact. If this is a group, then it was created by a specific user. The ID of that user should be listed here. The creation date is applicable to both groups, individual users. This is the timestamp of the last message we received from the given user. We saw this updated in the server class. We used, used this to sort the chats by latest update. Chat message is the property business object that contains the content of the message. Here we store the actual chats we had with the contact or group. As I mentioned before, photo isn't stored in JSON when we save the contact to keep the size low. We save the contact image in a separate file and don't want too much noise here. The app has two thumbnail images. One is slightly smaller than the other and both are rounded. To keep the code generic, I used arrays with uh, the detail and then used two sizes. One small size maps to the zero offset in the array and the large size maps to the one offset. Here are the sizes of these two images in millimeters. Images are masked to these sizes. Masking allows us to round an image in this case. We generate placeholder images, which are used when an image is unavailable. This method creates a mask image of a given size in pixels. A mask image uses black pixels to represent transparency and white pixels to represent the visible opacity. So where we draw a black rectangle image with a white circle in the center, when we apply this mask to an image, only the portion represented by the white circle will remain. The placeholder image is used when no image is defined. Again, we create this based on size and pixels. We create a gray image and then draw on it using white. 
we use the material font to draw the image of a person onto this image. This method gets the image represented by the contact. In theory, I could have used the photo property and overridden get to implement this. I thought this is a simpler approach. Here we lazily initialize the arrays of the mask image for larger or, sm large or small images. We create the mask images, then convert the mask image to mask object. Finally, we create the placeholder image. If the photo is null, I return the placeholder image instead of using the photo object. Otherwise, we fill the image into the size of the mask and apply the mask to create a round object. Fill scales the image so it's cropped, while filling the exact boundaries given. It doesn't distort the aspect ratio of the image like a typical scale operation would. The final public methods and variables cache the small and large image. Appropriately, they are the publicly exposed APIs for this functionality.